The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Welcome to Bronx Talk. According to the latest data, more than 37,000 Bronxites are blind or legally blind. And according to the National Eye Institute, a remarkably low percentage, 1.4%, of those people who could benefit from vision services actually receive them. So there's a need out there. And tonight we're going to take a look at our vision. No pun intended, or maybe it was intended. Also, there is incredible new glasses technology that's available only at a handful of stores in New York, and one of them is a forward-thinking optical here in the Bronx, and it addresses a sight issue that many of us have. So let's see what we can see in the Bronx. Please join me in welcoming a senior administrator for Visions, an organization that offers free services to the blind and visually impaired. Betsy Fabricant, good evening. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. And the CEO of Metro Optics with stores in Hunts Point, <coughs> Parkchester, and Westchester Square, John Benizio. Thank you for joining us once again. My pleasure, Gary. <laughs> um, Ms. Fabricant, let's start with you, and let's talk about some of the numbers that I started out mm -hmm. with. Um, does the Bronx have relatively more or fewer people who are visually impaired than maybe in the other five boroughs, or are we pretty much in line with the way statistics go throughout, let's say, the city of New York or other mm -hmm. urban centers? I think we're, the Bronx is high on the high end, but some of the other boroughs <coughs> match it. Um, you know, we've get, we get a lot of consumers that come to us and wanting services that are from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. We offer services both in English and Spanish, and that's very important in areas like the Certainly Bronx. Certainly so. Uh, to put it this way, regardless of what the numbers are, you're working to serve them in each of exactly. the people in each of exactly. the five boroughs. What are the needs that are out there <coughs> in that population, that very large mm -hmm. population of people who are blind or legally blind mm -hmm. um, or visually and seriously visually impaired that are not being served? Well, I think you put your finger right on it when you said that only 1.4 percent are reaching out for services. I think what tends to happen is, especially with age-related blindness, and that's the largest growing area, people don't realize that they can still live independently with vision loss. And that's the kind of services that Visions provides. We come to the home of a blind person. We train them how to live independently, how to cook, how to do their laundry, how to write a check, whatever needs they have, how to travel safely in the neighborhood using a long cane. And in their own homes, that's very rare. <coughs> We're one of the only agencies that, that does that. Plus, it's all free. None of our services cost anything. As we live longer happily and mm -hmm. hopefully um, I guess it would be a natural thing if your vision is deteriorating on some hand you say well you know what my vision is just not as good as it used to be so you accept it but I guess what you're trying to intrude into that or intercede into mm -hmm. that process you might be able to get some help without just saying well this is the way life has to be right now right and then also people don't realize I think when you have a family member who's losing their sight what ends up happening is you tend to protect them and say, we'll take care of you. And all the family pitches in and they do the cooking or they do all these things. And then it becomes difficult for everyone else in the family as well. And I think that's the important message that there are ways to get help so that this person can maintain their dignity and integrity by living and independently. Productivity. Productivity. 
working. We, we work we, with people. We often save, uh, you know, contact numbers for the end. But Jane, if you get a moment, you could put that up right on the screen, right at the top, mm -hmm. so that people who are reacting right away, like to what Ms. Fabricant is saying, and saying, you know what, I could use help, or my grandma, mm -hmm. or grandpa, or exactly. friend, or anybody could use help. Then they could pick up there's the right there on the mm -hmm. screen, the website and the phone number. Now you talked about seniors, and I want to put this up. Even before we bring Mr. Benizio into the equation, I want to put this up. You have what really is an exciting new option for mm -hmm. senior citizens that is important for Visions and certainly important and available to the people of the Bronx. So here it is. I'll tell you about tell that. Us all about okay, that. Visions was one of eight agencies only in all of New York City mm -hmm. to get a grant from the department from New York City Department on the Aging to offer a senior center, an innovative senior center. Ours is specifically for people with vision loss, people who are blind, seniors who are blind. The program will take place, it's a citywide program. People can come from all over New York City to participate in our program site, which is on 23rd Street in Manhattan, right in central Manhattan, Visions at Sellis Manor. That's a community center that we operate and provide programs for all ages of adults and youth, um, and at that center, people can come and get a hot dinner meal every day, totally free. So it is like many other senior, senior centers, centers with the component of being able to support people who have various stages and various types of vision loss. Right, but the difference is there are all these innovative programs there that they can take advantage of, health and wellness, all kinds of fitness, everything is adapted for people with vision loss. If you go to a local community center or a Y to take a class, people aren't sensitive to the vision loss and they don't adapt the program. Right, so they may be supportive and helpful and sympathetic, but the program and the programming is not designed to, to Exactly, really to meet the needs of a person with vision loss. Right. And, and so is that that's available and also, uh, should Anyone I just boldly can ask, it's free? Yes, and all it's those? totally free. Wow. And they'll get a hot dinner meal Monday through Friday at 3.30. For people in the Bronx, is there transportation support available, or am I going into we will area help, I we, to go? Right now, we <laughs> have no funding for transportation, but we can help people get accessoride or other services that they can access to get them there or help them train to learn how to take a subway. I was just going to say I unwittingly entered into yet another important uh, uh, component of what Visions does and that is well if you have to go and you do have a visual impairment there are people at Visions who can help you figure out how to navigate exactly. these things and get from place to place and again continue to live independently um, with, with this impairment. Okay, when we get back to you, okay. we're going to talk about the camp and things for young people and all those other wonderful things Great. you do. But I want to bring in Mr. Benizio. Good evening. Thank you Good for evening. joining us. And you have this innovation that I talked about. And of course, there is a relationship here because people with a vision impairment, of course, come to you for various things. And you um, work uh, to try and bring the latest technology to the people of the Bronx and put us all literally on the cutting edge. So what is this new technology and what is it about? And folks, where do you see it? Go ahead. <laughs> well, Gary, there's all types of vision impairment. And the one that most people have to deal with is when you hit the great old age of 40 and you start to become what's called presbyopic, which is where you now need the assistance of reading glasses in order to see things up close. And that happens to you whether you started off nearsighted, whether you never wore glasses, or whether you were farsighted to begin with. Your vision gets to the point now where you need some help reading. I, and I, I'm going to put myself in that category. You know, you mentioned it, and I was like, yes, I can relate. Okay. And I'm sure many of us can, so go ahead. In uh, years ago, in the older days, uh, bifocals were the uh, traditional form of uh, correction for this, where you had a distance prescription and you had a reading prescription separated by a line. Um, later on, we developed what's called progressive lenses, where the prescription progresses from distance to intermediate and then down to reading. So, so on the glasses, uh, and, and frankly I have them when I'm not here on TV, when I look down there's one uh, you know, type of uh, magnification, and then of course when I look up, and many of us of course have them. Correct. Uh, that's the way it is. Correct. But now... Well, now we've... <coughs> come across with a new thing, which is electronic eyewear. The benefit to electronic eyewear is that instead of having that reading prescription 
in your way all the time, you now have the option to be able to turn it on and off electronically. Right, and this is what uh, we're showing on the screen, the world's first electronic focusing eyewear. And, and you're seeing it right there, that it's going to change what is uh, blurry, and you touch the side of it, and all of a sudden, it becomes uh, clear. Exactly. I mean, that's what we're doing. Now, you, this gentleman's wearing them. Uh, let's come back over here, because John is actually wearing a pair of these. To, so, like, tell us what's happening when you do it. Okay, okay? right now I have it uh, in manual mode. There's two ways you can wear it. You can wear it automatic, or you can wear it in manual mode. Let's talk about uh, automatic first. If I take my finger and swipe the frame like this, while I'm looking straight ahead, I have the benefit of a distance prescription with an intermediate below it and no reading to get in my way. If I drop my head slightly, a micro accelerometer takes over and <laughs> gives me my and, God! and my turns God on it turns on the reading portion of my lens. So now I can see everything up close very clearly. And that happened automatically. It happens automatically. And if I don't know if you can see it when you're looking at me, but if I drop my head you can see it come on and off. Okay, well, I can now, see. It what would I be able to see? From right this down thing? here in the lower part of the lens okay. is a round area. Do, do it again. Okay, I drop my I, head. I don't know if they can see it on TV. We're going to okay. give a demonstration that you will be able to see. Now, yeah. that's automatic mode. I can also shut that off just by touching the temple. Now it's off. And I'm using it, and if I look down, this, it's, it's not on. But if I want it on, I can just touch the side, and it pops <coughs> into place. And I have a full reading area down below. And then when I look back up and I don't want it anymore, I touch it and it turns off. It, we're going to show some detail here in just a moment. Is it difficult to learn to coordinate all those things? Well, like any other different type of uh, glasses, you, you know, people who wear glasses have a lot of bad habits. And you pick up the bad habits based on the type of glasses you wear. If you wear reading glasses, for example, you probably find yourself doing this all the time, looking sure. over the top and of looking course. through. If you wear progressive lenses, you probably find yourself moving your head a lot to look for the area that you know where it is. I can relate to that uh, very, very well. This is really no different in that I've had them now for two days, and it takes me, it took me about a day to get comfortable wearing them. But uh, I wore them all day today at my desk, and I completely forgot that I had them on. Now, we have that other piece of video so people can see what it might look like. So let's put that up on the screen. Okay, okay so here it is, and then when you touch it, uh, basically, I guess right in the center there, all of a sudden. Now, That's is correct. the whole glasses are changing, no. or it changes a field just like uh, that particular? It changes two small areas <coughs> about that size, but very close to your eye, so that it, you, it gives you the effect of binocular vision where you see the whole page very clearly. Uh, now, this comes with uh, other um, uh, accessories. Now, you correct. brought us uh, some of the samples. It comes, of course, with two cases. Okay. okay, so you get the hard case. Oh, I, the I hard case, off, you get a soft case that has, uh, it doubles as a microfiber cleaning cloth. <coughs> and it also comes with this charger. And what you do is, because it's got batteries in it, and obviously you have to charge it at night, you place the glasses down on the charger, and if you can see the little red light <coughs> that pops Excuse up me. there. Now, does this go in? Oh, no, you don't have to I put don't know it if in. people can see the red mm -hmm. light if I turn it this way. Oh, Jane says they do see it. All right. Okay. There is a red light in there. Right. Now, when the red light is bright, that means it's in full charging mode. Right. Obviously, if you put it in the wrong way, it'll dim out just like it did there. Right. Okay. But so you, and it's pretty easy to use. You just plop it on there and go to sleep. When you wake up in the morning, you'll be able to take your glasses, turn them right side up, and on the inside of the temple, you'll start to see lights flashing. For every... Let's get a picture of that. Can we uh, tilt up or get it? Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. You can see in. I'm going to turn it off for a second. If you turn it upside down like you're going to put it away, you'll see a series of flashes inside the temple. And those flashes indicate that it is now oh, in sleep is, yeah. mode. Now the glasses are in sleep mode and they're off. If I turn them back this way, which is the way I'm going to wear them, in a second, you'll see okay, you a series of flashes. Tilt it up so we can see. Okay. There it is. Okay. You see a series of flashes. Right. And then it holds steady there. And it's going to flash a few times. And then goes. He's got to hold them straight forward. Yeah, you and then, uh, 
So, and then it, it holds steady, and that means it's... For every on. flash, it's, uh, it's a 20% charge. So you know how much battery life you have left. And mo can we assume it'll charge through the day and you could use it? Yeah, and you actually, one charge, one full charge will last three days. Betsy, uh, your reaction when we were talking about it before <laughs> the show is, I want a pair of those. All right, yeah, this, <laughs> this would be a revelation for many people, undoubtedly. Mm -hmm. Um, the beautiful thing about this, Gary, yes. is that this is the beginning of a technology breakthrough. Well, I wanted to ask you, because you were telling me about that, and every time he told me, I cut him off and said, John, tell us on the show. So, this is um, technology. It seems logical that you could build things that small and that sensitive, but what is this the beginning of? Well, this works with a liquid crystal uh, layer in the reading area. Eventually, um, what they're working on now is technology where when someday when you go to your eye doctor, and by someday I mean probably around 10 years from now, you'll go into the eye doctor, you'll pick out the glasses that you want, which will all have liquid crystal lenses in them. You'll have your eyes examined and your doctor will download the prescription to your glasses. Hmm. Suppose download the, the prescription right to the glasses right so to the you lenses. don't have That's to right. go. Which opens up uh, a whole door to people with visual impairment. Why so, is that? Which ties in. Because there are a lot of people who have very, very difficult prescriptions to be able to fabricate in the old traditional ways. If we can do it with liquid crystals inside the lens and put very high prescriptions in thinner layers of lens and change it as need to be just by going into a computer and changing it, okay, we can really open the door to a, a whole new world of refractive um, solutions mm. for patients. <laughs> The, the expense, I mean, these are not cheap right now. I mean, not, not, uh, so what, what do they cost? Well, they, be, retail, be they retail for $1,299 right. uh, at Metro Optics anyway. Some places may charge more or less. Uh, but the $1,299 at the three Metro Optics locations in the Bronx. Uh, on our website, metrooptics.com, you can uh, print a $100 coupon off the price of this. And if you have insurance, insurance will cover about $150. So you can get them right now for about $1,000. And I think the, much like any, we were talking again before the show, any technology, the price is going to come down over the period of time. Uh, one thing I did want to show, um, you I, I guess the fashion is an important thing what people put on their face but there are many I, we can show some of the pictures there are many different styles so you can uh, let's put it up there so people uh, can see it um, so these are available and when you come into um, uh, is that right retro now, optics what do you say there's a couple of right now there's there. a selection of 36 designs <clears throat> which are all in a separate location in the stores folks you can just put up a couple of these pictures just change them right through Go ahead. Um, there's a lot of rimless designs like you see here. Men and women. Men and women. Uh, there are a lot of uh, plastic designs which are very popular now. Mm -hmm. uh, tortoise shell type glasses in browns and blacks like okay. this one here. Wow. Um, it, it's absolutely amazing technology. Um, John, why did you go for this? Now I know you and I over the years have talked about your interest in all different glasses technology you've always been interested why did you say well we want to be the first in the bronx and maybe the first in the whole region to, to have this available well we always want to be cutting edge if it's new and it's exciting and it's in our industry uh we want to have it we uh, want to be educated about it we want to educate the public about it so this was a no-brainer for me to to actually put this in uh with something that I, i've been following this for a number of years as they've been developing the technology and when it started to become available I had uh, I knew a lot of people in the industry that were involved in the uh, mm -hmm. manufacture of this so we're one of the first in the country to uh, launch this. Have they been available? Have you sold them? I mean is it is it working out or we're just rolling it out We right just now? got them two weeks ago and so far <clears throat> we've got three. You've sold three. Done, yes. mm. Now did you sell them because people came in and said I have this problem you know, what can I do? Or did they know about it beforehand and they said, hey, I heard you have this new glasses? Well, we were uh, on television about this a couple of months ago. So people were uh, already asking us about it. Uh, we've done uh, several, there's been several articles in the, in the local press recently about this. The Daily News, the Bronx Times Reporter, both ran stories right. on it. So it's been out there. Yep. Um, before we bring uh, Ms. Fabricant back in, um, is it available for any prescription? Uh, I mean, are no, there there's, limits? No, there's a limit at this point. Um, but it's a pretty decent uh, range. range. Right. Uh, I would say that you could fit. Uh, we could fit about ninety percent of people with it. Well, John, it's just outstanding, and the, the fact that 
it's happening in the Bronx. Metro Optics is the first one in, in, around that I'm aware of that, that's doing this. And uh, it just means that we're trying to lead the way rather than follow. And I, mm -hmm. Congratulations Thank on you. it. And um, we'll all learn more about it as time goes on. Um, Ms. Fabricant, let's bring you uh, back into the um, equation. I guess these kinds of innovations, for not only for glasses technology, but for other technology, are happening all the time. Yes. In, in, the, in, the, in the world of vision, as it were. Is there anything on the horizon for people with impairments that are now helping them live every day better maybe than they used to? I mean, oh, yeah. What, so I give, mean give the, us an example of some things. The talking cell phones. I mean, people that we work with who are totally blind can use these iPhones, it just amazes me, and talk with them and get all the information they need, call my husband, <laughs> tell me how you to You know, that's here. very interesting because yeah. I have a cell phone and every time it starts talking to me, I get annoyed, but of me course, <laughs> because I, I don't think about it, but for right. someone who with a visual impairment, this, this is mm -hmm. a, yeah. a little Some of it is high tech. Right. Um, there's all kinds of technology being developed now for people with vision loss. Com we teach computer classes at Sellis Manor free of charge mm -hmm. to teach people how to use a lot of this assisted technology so that they can work, be independent in their lives. Again, many of us look at, um, at computers that talk to you and, mm -hmm. and all those kinds of things. Well, that's kind of nice, but again, think about it for somebody who has a visual impairment or legally blind right. or is fully Absolutely blind. Absolutely essential. This is uh, fully essential. Um, so now let's talk about for children. You, Visions, okay. of course, uh, works with seniors. We talked about this new mm -hmm. senior center. Um, but you have this summer camp that, of course, is mm -hmm. somewhat legendary, really, because it's really inspired and, yeah. uh, again, I'll use well, the term, saved the lives of so many young people. Well, it's 85 years young. <laughs> Visions Center on Blindness, VCB. It's it, located in Rockland County, New York, although most of the people that attend are from New York City, from the five boroughs. And we have different sessions geared to different populations. It's a residential vision rehab and training center. So people that come participate in, in programs there that also promote their independence. We have special programs for blind children and their families. And what's unique about that is it's not send your child away for two weeks, it's come as a whole family, so that the sighted parents, the sighted siblings, um, the grandparents, everybody comes as the child is taught and learns how to do certain skills. The parents get to watch it. They get to network with each other and talk about other kinds of services available, and it affects the whole program, and the whole with, family. And without a doubt, the child feels more comfortable because the family is involved and then in other circumstances, right. the child will feel more centered and more comfortable just with this disability because they're being supported in every which way. And for the parents, Obviously. it's very important because most of these parents, once again, like other family members, tend to protect and shelter their blind child, not realizing that they have to let their child go off and do things like every other child and be independent. And this teaches them that they can let go. I've had parents tell me this over and over and over again, that when they first come there, they don't let this child out of their sight. You know, they come for a week, they're going everywhere with them. And then gradually, as they feel more and more comfortable when they see what the staff is able to do with the children and how they're interacting with each other and how proud they are when they can walk from their bedroom to the dining hall on their own, the parents start to understand that and start to let go a little and bit. It, and it also communicates a lot of support for the notion of independence. That exactly. And, and I can only imagine what it's like for a youngster who may have been, for good reasons, sheltered in some ways, now all of a sudden this summer camp freezing. Right. One thing which we brought up at the beginning, and I, I want to emphasize, there unfortunately are many people who are living with these kinds of disabilities without realizing that Visions is there and available. Mm -hmm. uh, what, let, let's put up the contact info again, and, and I guess um, the idea is call us, right? Exactly. Uh, even call us questions. even if you're not registered with the state services for the blind. That's called the Commission for the... Um, Ah, CBVH, Commission for the Blind and Visually Handicapped of New York State. Even if you're not registered, if you haven't had that eye exam yet, call us and we will help you connect to places where you can get your eyes examined, where we can get you registered with the Commission and provide the services for free. 
And, and now I'll talk a little bit out of turn. Both uh, Mr. Benizio and I are on the Bronx Board of Directors for uh, Visions, and there's there's a big luncheon coming up. We have it every year. I'll let Ms. Fabricant answer for both of us, really, because we're both intimately involved in it. What's the uh, idea behind the Pamela Pamela Schneider luncheon, and what does it raise money for, mm -hmm. and what does the money go for, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. It's also well, a good luncheon, by the way. You know, <laughs> good food. Yeah, well, the luncheon is taking place on March 9th. It's, an, it's a fundraising event, and the money that's raised helps us sustain our programs. Um, we pro not only do we provide programs to families, children, adults, seniors, but we also have a component where we do community outreach. We come to different boroughs and we talk about how to incorporate blind people into your programs in, in local senior centers, how to train those staff so that they can include blind and visually impaired people in their programs and adapt them to meet the needs of that population. And also to educate the public, to make the public aware of blindness related services. Mr. Benizio, for you and Metro Optics, I know it's it's been a very interesting collaboration to work mm -hmm. with Visions. I guess uh, it, it's really the bottom line when you think about what you're doing aside from running a, a very well run and operated business, but you're really serving a need. Well, yeah, and Visions really uh, fills the need that we can't fill. Okay, because when people come in for eyewear, uh, you know, there is a, a certain range that we can get to, but then you get to the point where uh, you know, a pair of glasses just isn't going to do it anymore. And then right. it becomes a matter of being able to refer the people to the right association. And, and we've done a lot of uh, referrals to Visions, and Visions um, is really a lifeline for most of these people who would tell you, I will give anything uh, to be able to see again. And we can't make them see again, but what we can do is give them back their independence, and we do that through Visions. Congratulations on the Empower glasses <laughs> which you. empowers people and I guess accordingly visions <laughs> empowers people who right. are um, uh, have all different kinds of vision loss at, at just about every level and uh, it, it's just an incredible free service so uh, Metro Optics Hunts Point Park Chester Westchester Square and visions call out the phone number so people will uh, pick up the phone and call you thank you what is the number well, sorry, 212-625-1616. Two two. There you go. John Benizio, thank you so much. Betsy Fabricant, thank you so much. Folks, if you have further comments or questions on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, then email them to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. Now, archives of the show are available at bronxnet.org. You click Bronx Talk on the right-hand navigation bar. A lot of interesting shows coming up. Next week, January 2nd, we take a look at LGBT life in the Bronx with the author of an excellent novel about gays in the Bronx and also the program director of the newly located Bronx Pride Center. That's next week on the 2nd. Then on January 9th, we focus on cent the Central Bronx with an advocate who fights for his community and the chair of Community Board 4. So always something good on Bronx Talk, Monday nights here at 9 on BronxNet, Cablevision Channel 67, Verizon Fires Channel 33. Thank you to producer Jane Filoro who puts all of this stuff together. Um, our uh, director is Michael Arias and our cast of thousands up in the booth. And uh, to you, happy holidays. Good night.